Hello, Alita, and welcome. Thank you for taking the time and energy to spend with me today. How are you? I'm good, Willow, and thank you so much for having me. I'm great. How are you doing? Amazing. Thank you. Good. And I'm going to introduce you to those watching. You are meeting Alita Norris, writer, entrepreneur, speaker, and coach. She is also a mom, wife, sister, friend, business owner, and dreamer and juggling some crazy balls, juggling the same crazy balls, excuse me, that, we, that you are. Her mission is to create a place where you can come for ideas, inspiration, and alongside of a community of women looking for the same thing. That's beautiful. And you have been in this kind of business for 30 years, correct? Yes. Would you like to explain that? Bring us, bring us from day one up to date. Oh, sure. Absolutely. So the, and, and, and incidentally, the work I've been doing for 30 years has given me so much opportunity to support people in, in slightly a different way from what we'll ultimately be talking about today as my passion for supporting women, it continues to grow. So going back 30 years ago, I was really fortunate to find an, an entry into the world of professional training and development. And in particular, I had a, a, a real passion for helping leaders be better leaders of people. So 30 years ago, I struck out on my own. I left corporate America at age 26 and became a con a, essentially a subcontract trainer for other training and development companies, then started my own company in 1996. So for the past 30 years, I've had the good fortune to run this wonderful boutique leadership development firm along with another wonderful and amazing woman named Nancy. We've been business partners. We've been friends. Um, we've got a wonderful team of 20 people who work with us. And during all of these 30 years that I've been in this leadership development kind of side of the equation, just deep within me, there's been this, this kind of continual whisper that part of my purpose in life is to support the happiness and confidence of women. And I did have, incidentally, the opportunity as I did leadership coaching to coach many, many, many women who don't just want to be coached as a leader, they want to be coached as a whole person, juggling leadership responsibilities, family, motherhood, um, community, you know, service and so on, because I, I just think women's lives are really complex. So now I get to walk kind of both of these professions. I continue my leadership development and I'm really excited to be launching this new business specifically focused on women. And a lot has happened in 30 years. I love it. I love how you describe it as leaders being better at leading people. Right. And I love that it's a boutique firm. That's right. That just mm -hmm. takes me to this intimacy. Right. Which just explains exactly who you are. It's very, the work you do is so intimate. And the fact that it's a, that's beautiful and the whisper. So what has the whisper been whispering to you? Well, so in particular, I, you know, one of the things that I would say that I believe any woman watching this would, would um, connect with is this idea that we are really prompted to become our best selves as a result of struggles and hardships and you know, unexpected situations in our, in our lives. And so I was really kind of tooling along pretty happily in this whole leadership development space and, and raising my children and life was pretty good. And then I had some hardships and I found myself in 2006 at the age of 33, just in a really crappy place. It was a, it was a bad place in life. I had come off of a believe this or not a second divorce someone who never thought I'd be divorced even once and I had to do some soul searching and I really had to connect with what sense I could make of all of this mess that I was in and I I hired a life coach and 
in this process of putting together a life plan to crawl myself out of a tough place, what bubbled up to the top is that I, it, as kind of a key purpose in my life, I really have a passion for supporting women. And I, I want to be an encourager of women because I've learned that while we start out pretty idealistic, especially in our 20s and maybe early 30s, life starts to happen to almost all of us. But the really tricky thing about it is that while tough times are happening to all of us, we don't tell anybody. We, we plow through it on our own. We, we kind of keep it a secret because let's face it, women are a bit competitive and we look around and get caught up in all of this comparison game playing. I sure didn't share my struggles with anyone. When I was ready to start coming out of those struggles, I started looking around and talking to women and realizing that if you, if you really ask, like, how really are you? What we start hearing from women are things like, you know, I'm not great. I'm overwhelmed. I'm disappointed about some things. I, I'm sad about some things. I've got some things I haven't told anybody. And life is so multifaceted. There are so many areas that it can get messy. I had to have my own mess to realize that other women also had some things that they didn't want to talk about. It really opened a door for me to think about, you know what, I, hmm, at some point, I want to be more intentional about encouraging women through coaching and speaking and writing. And so 2006, that, you know, that life plan that I did, I, I alluded to a life coach. She helped me create a life plan. And that life plan spoke to this whole idea of encouraging women. Now that was 13 years ago. And I'm now just really, I've done some other things, but I'm really delving in now um, with a lot of passion and a lot of intentionality. With spark. Yeah, that's with right. Absolute spark, which leads me to your book because everything you talked about is amazing. And you even say that, um, you're inspired by your own experiences, which is what you just shared. Yes. And you help other women by turning an overwhelming to-do list into an exciting roadmap, transforming self-doubt into self-confidence and certainty, and trading difficulties for clear understanding of purpose. Those are some very powerful statements. Would you like to talk more about that? Sure. Yes. So I, and I'll, I'll talk just a bit about this first one, the overwhelming to-do list. One of my friends, while I was writing this book, I, I gave her an early draft of the manuscript and asked her if she would read it. And she came back and just said, oh my gosh, as you talk about the idea of being, of women being overwhelmed, she said, I was with a group of women from kind of another area of my life and thematically what we all agreed on is that we are overwhelmed by where we are and underwhelmed by where we're going and i loved it and you and you know because you're looking at some of the information from my book that became one of the primary questions on the back cover of my book are you overwhelmed by where you are or underwhelmed by where you see yourself going so in order to satisfy both of those problems, we have to turn that whole, it's kind of like, what are you gonna do about it? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're overwhelmed, what are you gonna do about that? You're underwhelmed, what are you gonna do about that? Well, how about if we have a roadmap? How about if we have a plan to get a handle on, you know, all of these, like you said, the crazy balls, right? <laughs> We're all juggling the same crazy balls. Well, let's get a handle on that by being more intentional and let's create a vision of some kind for our future. Let's listen to the whispers within us. Let's, let's listen to the I wish, or if only I could. Too many women say, and this now turns us into the self doubt. Well, she can do that, but I can't do that. And Willow, you know, we were talking before we started that what, both of us are doing and what any woman is doing who 
who wants to write a book, and that, of course, this is a specific thing, but to write a book and to do what we're doing right now, I can't tell you how many times in the last year I've said, who do I think I am? To, you know, these other women who are doing this, they're doing this because, well, because they can. Mm -hmm. And like, what makes me think I can? We're surrounded by women with that self-doubt. And of course, you and I are in the business of saying to women, you can do it. If, if that person over there can do it, you can do it. And very often I say to women, don't process the what and the how at the same time. If there's something that you dream of doing or you wish you could do something, settle on what that is. Don't, you'll get to the how later know what, you know, know what's within you. So in 2006, I said to my life coach, I said, I, I want to write a book. And that was in 2006. It's 2019. I started writing this book 10 months ago. I waited 13 years. And part of it was because I don't know how to write a book. I don't know what the process is. And also I was busy with a whole bunch of other stuff. But, you know, finally I found the how through, you know, Author Academy Elite, this wonderful process that teaches us how to do it. Well, we don't have to know how to do it when we decide what. So I, I want nothing more than to help thousands and thousands of women over the next decade or two to know, yeah, you can do it. If, if you can dream it, you can achieve it. And that's, that's a book title. I don't mean to steal someone else's thunder, but, um, and we need difficulties to do it, right? So that's my last thing here is trade difficulties for a clear understanding of your purpose. So many of us, when we're in the midst of just a mess, you know, kind of look up to our greater person and, you know, okay, God, make use of this. Do, do something with this. Let's not waste this mess that I created and that I crawled my way out of, let's use it to help somebody else. And purpose is the rent that we all pay to live on this earth. And so how do we live that out? And, and unless we figure out what that is, we can't be on fire. And I, I don't want any woman to be going through life on autopilot, living a mediocre life, and at the end of her life saying, oh, I just wish I had done more. I, I don't want, I, I want everyone to be fully used up when they come to the end of their journey. So I'm so excited about this. And I, you know, thanks for asking me. All I'm just questions. so excited watching your passion because your passion is contagious. And that is so important that people see it. It's, you're glowing right now and it's beautiful. So thanks. with that note, tell me, what does it mean to be a woman who sparks? Well, so that essentially that means that you're on fire. That when you had a list. I'm going to stop you for a second. To, yeah. Somehow we had a, connect, a connection and it froze. So I don't want okay. anyone to miss a word of what you just oh. said to start over. Okay. What is a woman who sparks? Okay. So a woman who sparks is somebody who's on fire about her life and about what she's doing and what she's striving for. And she wakes up every day, she hits the ground running and, and she has a list. You guys, you, you have to have a list. You have to be overwhelmed by what's on your list. And you can't wait to wake up and get your day started. At the end of the day, you don't want it to end because you still have more that you have to do. Only you make sure you end it because women who spark also get enough sleep and they take care of themselves and they, you know, they do all of those things that we should be doing, drinking water and eating well and, and having time to be quiet. Um, but you, you have to be on fire. Don't, don't not want to get out of bed in the morning. I love it. And so you said you had this idea in 2006. Uh-oh. I'm listening to you again. 
Are you there? Okay. Yep. I lost okay, your picture back. for a second. Okay. So you had this idea in 2006, but you just started 10 months ago. So what finally inspired you to write the book called Women Who Spark? That's, that's a great question. So um, a, a couple of things. First of all, what I would say about that is, yes, it was, it was 13 years. And I want everybody to know that that's okay that in our life, we have seasons of life. And in 2006, that wasn't the right time for me. I was raising three children as a single mom. I was very busy running a company, making sure that these kids had what they needed, wanting to be involved in their lives fully, as fully as a, you know, kind of that juggling mom can do. And it, it wasn't, it just wasn't the right time to write the book. So the kids all left, they went off to college, they graduated, they got, they kind of entered into their life independently and it was the right time. I, I happened upon this information for Carrie Oberbrunner's um, company, Author Academy Elite. It just came at the right time. I saw it, I connected with it and within me, I knew and the season was right. Also, the other thing is that I said a couple of years ago to my business partner in, in our leadership company, Living as a Leader, I said to her, I'm losing my spark. I, because I didn't know the book was going to be called Women Who Spark. I didn't know that. I said to her, you know what? I'm getting tired of this. I, we've, been, we've been doing this since 1996. Every single day we have to wake up and keep the pipeline filled. We have to, you know, always be prospecting. And that was my responsibility in the business. And I said, I'm tired of it. I, I need something new and fresh. And then at the same time, there, there were two other things that happened. My husband said to me one day, he said, I'm not having fun in my work. I need something new and fresh. And then I was watching an interview with um, Bobby Flay, the master chef, Willie Geist was interviewing him on TV. And Willie said to him, what's next for you? And Bobby Flay said, I don't know. I need to find my next spark. Well, all these things came together. And I thought, what am I doing? I, since 2006, have known that I've got another passion that's just simmering within me. I better just get myself in gear and get this going. So I, and then when I do something, I do it all in a, you know, like in a big flurry. And spark, I, start a fire. Yes, you're right. Because when you get the spark, you have to jump into action. And the last 10, it's been about 10 months has been a complete whirlwind. Yes. So, and I've got my spark. I mean, like I'm on fire. Can you see? Yes. Yeah. It's obvious. I love it. <laughs> Your spark yeah. totally ignited it. And that's, <laughs> I love how you share and you tell other women it's okay that it took that long. Right. Yeah. Because the seed gets, mm -hmm. and that there's seasons, because it's true, the seed gets planted. Right. And we don't keep checking. It's underground, it's under the dirt. And then all of a sudden, when it flourishes, it's like, okay, look out, world, and you flourish. Right. And it's beautiful. That's right. Yep. It's time. Yeah. So what have you learned about women over the years through this process? Well, yeah, so there's, there's one event. Well, there's two events in particular that, that I want to share because it, it, it was pretty close back to the 2006 timeframe when I started thinking about this. So when I was in this really difficult place, and I'll just share that the, the difficult place was triggered by two divorces within five years. And again, never thought that would happen to me. Um, my second marriage was to a man who was an alcoholic, unbeknownst to me, really, really very difficult time. And I came out of that, I came out of that second marriage, a, such a different person, having been introduced to all of what comes along with that disease, and a lot of financial struggle and you know, these three kids who I adored. So I, what I did to help assist my own healing is I started leading divorce recovery groups in my church. And 
I thought, well, as long as I'm doing it, and there are a number of other women going through the same journey, I'll let, let's just bring everyone together and we'll get on this healing journey together. Well, I started to share in a couple of places. I just shared my, my testimony, my story about kind of my former self being very caught up in the accomplishment and acquisition side of life, right? Like I want success, I want stuff, I want houses and cars and vacations. And then life comes along and just knocks you down. And I became a completely different person. People said to me, you're nicer now, you're calmer now. So I saw that as a good thing. So I started sharing that story, how I felt I had become a more spiritual person, a calmer person, a more other-centered person. I shared some of the events that led to that. And in two public settings where I shared that, one at my church and one at a women's retreat, in both of those cases, women flocked to me. Women are so drawn to difficulty. And it was me too, me too. Thank you so much for your transparency. Thank you so much for your vulnerability. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. Me too, me too, me too. And it could be my husband also has problems or challenges, or I also have regret, or I also have shame. And I thought I was alone. And I, you know, that, that point in time was so meaningful to me. And I'm right now, <laughs> Willow, right now I'm kind of caught up in that story. And you know what? I completely forgot what your question was. I think my story was building to it. Totally it was, lost the question. It was what have you learned about the women, or oh, women over the years? Yeah. So that women are, I, I've learned that women are struggling. They're struggling quietly and privately. And because we have so many areas of life that we juggle, it, it's, the, it's the job. And some women are, are struggling with career disappointment. Or it's the kids. And some women are struggling because they don't have a good relationship with one of their kids. Or one of their kids is wayward. Or it's a struggle in their marriage. Or it's that they've gained 50 pounds and they didn't mean for that to happen or that their health in other ways isn't good. There's so many areas that women have the ability to struggle. And the more you just calm down and say to someone, how really are you? They'll say, you know what, since you've asked, like, I'm not good. I'm, I'm happy enough, but I'm not happy. I've lost my confidence somewhere. And that's a big one. I've lost my confidence of my younger self and I don't know how to get it back. I feel, someone even posted on my tribe page today. She said, I've lived life so long on autopilot being what everybody else wants me to be, being what my husband wants me to be, being what my kids want me to be, being what my boss wants me to be, being what my sister wants me to be. I've lost who I am. I, I don't even know who I am. And she said, I'm, I've worked really hard to regain who I am. And so I, I just don't find a lot of women who have it all going on in every area of life. Um, and the, the last thing that I would just add is, I taught recently. I talked to Colleen Georges, who wrote a book called Rescript. Rescript the stories you tell yourself. And I know that's not the right subtitle, but she's been a therapist for years. And I said, "How many women are good?" She said, "Not very many of them." And the ones who say they are, they're leaving something out because life has too many compartments. So that's what I've learned about women is when we're really honest, there's at least one struggle that we wish someone would care about. Yeah. I love it. And I want to clarify, one of the things you said are so many women are drawn to difficulty. And 
Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that they were drawn to you because of difficulty. I think they were drawn to you because of your vulnerability to share and connect over the struggle. It's not that they want the difficulty or they're drawn to the struggle. They're drawn to you and together for the support, for the vulnerability, for the community, for the tribe, so that like you said, so many women out there are not honest about the truth. And I believe that they're drawn to you because you actually were willing to share the truth. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. So it's, it's kind of a nuance. And I'll, I'll share another example that really intrigued me. So about, about two years ago, maybe three years ago, I met a woman through a group of my friends and some of them knew her. I had never met her, but she happened to be at a social gathering and, and my other friend said, Oh, you know, you really need to meet her. So we chatted and we chatted about families and kids and jobs. And when we were talking about jobs, I said, I love the work I do. I, I just love it. And I work a lot of hours and I work a lot of hours because I'm very passionate. And she said to me, I don't love my job. In fact, I don't even like my job. And my goal is to work as few hours as possible. Well, we had that conversation and, and ultimately that conversation ended and we went our separate ways. And I saw her about a year ago and we were catching up. Now, uh, two years has gone by and we were catching up. And I happened to say to her in our conversation, I said, you know, it's really interesting. I think back to the first conversation we had when you said you don't really like your job very much. And the fact of the matter is I've lost my spark for my work. Like I'm not having fun right now. And I kid you not, she said to me, when I met you, I didn't like you. And I didn't like you because of how happy you were about everything. And I like you better right now because you just told me that. So, you know, I think you're right. I think that women are drawn to women who have a kind, calm, other-centered nature and are willing to say, hey, I I'm happy to tell you that behind, you know, this pretty outfit I'm wearing today and behind the fact that I'm smiling to you because I'm talking with you, I've got some stuff in life that isn't going the way I want it to be going. I, women are drawn to that, um, the person. And yeah, women, women are drawn to um, imperfect lives. There's probably a lot of ways that we could dissect that topic. Um, women don't wanna be alone, you know? Well, and I think it, over being drawn to the imperfections, they're more drawn to the authenticity and the right. honesty right because yeah. she it's almost like she could see your mask in the first one mm -hmm. in the first meeting and now the authenticity shines and that is so beautiful i know from my experience the more honest i am the more people like me it wasn't about being drawn to my struggle it was being able to see through my illusion Right. And your oh, right. authenticity is beautiful and the vulnerability and it's what draws people in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. And with that, you are actually this women who spark. It's become a thing. It's becoming, it's gaining momentum. So tell me more about that and where you're taking this. It's amazing. Yes, it, it is really amazing. And um, I didn't mean for any of it to, well, I didn't mean for it to happen the way it did. So, so therefore I think it's really meant to be. So I, I wrote, you know, I started to write this book, tried to come up with, you know, what the title would be. There's all kinds of titles that we could give our books. And I, I had kind of picked up on this whole theme of I've lost my spark. I need to find my spark. So I decided to call the book women who spark. And then because Carrie, in his, obviously, you know this too, he talks about building a business around your book. So how can you turn your book into a, you know, an income stream and, and reach more people and make a difference for more people? So I thought, well, so I'll create an online course. And I decided to create a course called Women Who Spark Bootcamp. 
and that's a life planning and goal setting course, which launches in October. But at the same time, I, in talking with some other women about this, they just said, oh my gosh, there's so many women who would benefit by this topic. So then I thought, well, I'll create a Facebook community. And I had, I had already started a blog on my website and I had started a YouTube channel and, and both of these kind of content platforms were meant to be able to provide content for women to strengthen their positivity and their productivity every day. And then this idea of this Facebook community came along so I started this community called the Women Who Spark Tribe, and you know it because you're in it. So on May 1st, I launched the website and the blog and the tribe and invited some of my friends to join the tribe. And so in the, I, I would say in the first week, 40 women came into the tribe and we started, I was a bit formulaic about this Women Who Spark Tribe. I was doing... I was guiding some conversation like a lot of community leaders do. It's like, okay, mindful Monday. What are you mindful about today? Tough Tuesday. What's tough today? Um, thankful Thursday. What are you thankful for? So I was doing kind of this formulaic moderating of this community and, and really realized they, they just need more. They just need more freedom to have conversation about what's on their mind. And I started turning some of the leadership over to them. I started asking them to post what it was they wanted to engage in conversation about. And these conversations started taking, taking hold and women were mm -hmm. grateful for the depth of conversation, like real vulnerable, transparent conversations. And this tribe, that was May 1st, this tribe this morning hit 500 women. And I was so happy I looked at it when it was at 500. It wasn't at 501. I didn't miss it. I said to my husband, oh my God, I'm so happy. I, I quickly took a screenshot of it and, and you maybe saw, I did, you did see that I posted it because you commented on it. And um, it's so lovely. It's, it's amazing. And I'll tell you, if anybody on this Women Who Spark tribe posts it somewhere during the day, I really need encouragement because, oh my gosh, like a bunch of mama bears, they just come out of the woodwork and just embrace whoever it is who's asking for some support or encouragement. I, I, I get chills. I, I'm so excited by this community of women. So yeah, this, the women who spark, it's a thing. It is. And can I stop you right there? Because I want to share something to anybody watching this. Every woman in that group is a reflection of you. Mm -hmm. They are supportive because you're supportive. You welcome every woman that joins the tribe and put a spotlight on them. And you ask the other women too. They are following your lead. And so it's really important that anyone watching this really understands you are attracting amazing, empowering women who empower and lift each other up because it's who you are. And that is how you are leading by example. And that is why any woman looking for this support, this tribe is available to you. And it really is women empowering women and supporting other women because that is what Alita does. That Thank you. That's even spotlight the people like, cause you can do stats on these groups and you spotlight people that are conversation starters and that post stuff and you go above and beyond to welcome women, honor women and support women. And it's really beautiful what you're building and I'm honored to be a part of it. Oh, I'm so happy to have you there. And you, everything that you just said is exactly how I would describe you. Wow. And I think that's why we're in this conversation today. And it's why I'm in your tribe and you're in my tribe. And it, yeah, we're all helping each other be better. We're helping each other feel more hopeful, more empowered, more inspired. I, it, it's, yeah, it's one for all of you watching you know, you're watching this. So you, you know, you, 
obviously have these same kinds of qualities that Willow is describing. And the links for all of this will be below or around wherever this video is, depending on which platform you watch it on, because it will be on a couple different platforms. Um, when you say you didn't mean for it to happen this way, mm -hmm. hear a little bit more on that. Well, I think it's that I didn't, I didn't envision it. I had no idea when I, when I, you know, was writing the book and I knew, well, when the book launches, I, I knew I needed to have a website. So I started sketching out this website and I love, I love my website. I just, I, I'm in love with it. And Matt Gerber who built it, he nailed it. So I knew that I wanted women to have some resources. So when I initially built the website, it's like, okay, we're going to have a book. We're going to have a life assessment. We're going to have a, an online course, which is the Women Who Spark Bootcamp. And there's coaching. You know, if somebody wants a coach, I can do some coaching and I can do some speaking. And I think that I was in such a business mode because I'm a businesswoman and I was building the infrastructure of a business. But when I was building the infrastructure of the business, I forgot about the women. Like I didn't think about kind of the build it and they will come because they did and they're inviting their friends and they're, they're asking me to come and see them. And so I'm in, I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. There's a real growing tribe of the women who spark tribe, for example, in Kingman, Arizona. Well, they've scheduled for me to go out there in November. There's a lot of them. And one of the women is in a, is in a, a professional women's sorority called the Soar Optimists. And she said, we want you to come in. We want to host a, a public event in Kingman hosted by the Soar Optimists and have you come and speak and sign books. Well, they're like, they're like little kids waiting for Christmas day. They're so excited that I'm coming there. And I didn't, I didn't, you know, I wasn't thinking about that. And I wasn't thinking about the gratitude and the women on the tribe page who say, thank you so much that you have this community. I needed this. I needed a place where women are positive and encouraging. I, I you know, I, I was, I forgot to envision that part of it. And so now I just feel like I'm going along for the ride and you know, having a ball. Yeah. So basically what that message says to me or how I interpret it and correct me if I'm wrong is once you get your spark back and you really honor your path and you honor your heart and you honor your soul, magic is going to unfold in ways you never expected. And you're going to experience more bliss than your mind could comprehend. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. And I've seen that with other women too, and you probably have as well. And we, sometimes we forget to listen. And this is a part of my boot camp process. It's, it's how do you connect with what's within you? How do you find it? it? That's the what. And again, you know, worry about the how later, but what, yeah, what are you not listening for? Because you're so busy on autopilot doing laundry and vacuuming and making lunches for your kids and you know driving the carpool it's like <laughs> stop you know stop for a minute. take a walk without your earbuds or drive in the car with the radio off wake up 30 minutes earlier and have some quiet time and and connect with what is in your heart we, we just we forget to do that I love it thank you and I'm, we're kind of getting to the end of our time and I'm so excited there will do you want to share a little bit more about your boot camp and invite people in before I ask you the last question oh sure yeah so the boot camp and the we'll and the pain launch the, the book launch yes, yes I'm sorry Poof. Duh. Oh, oh, one of the main purposes of this let's invite people to the book launch and the boot camp yes yeah, so the so the women inspired boot camp as I mentioned it's a it's a process it's an eight-week process 
to really prepare, help you prepare your plan for 2020 and beyond. And I have a kind of a formula that drives toward a magic date that I call whatever today is, 18 months from now is a magic date. If you put a stake in the ground for something big that you want to gain some momentum, I love the 18 month time period. And then within that, every 90 days is a really important time frame. So boot camp is kind of built around this idea of learn who you are, connect with your overwhelmingness of today, think about what you can be on fire for for your future, and then have a bit of a guided framework to follow to you know be on fire 18 months from now. So that's kind of the boot camp. Well, because right now I'm in the book launch time frame, Women Who Spark launches on September 20th. That's the release day. And my goal is to sell 300, or not 300, 3,000 books that day. To do that, it kind of takes a try. So yeah. I have formed a book launch team and anybody can be on the book launch team. And if you're on the book launch team, you get a t-shirt, you get a Women Who Spark t-shirt, you get an autographed copy of my book, and um, you get a discount on the boot camp. So, and being on the book launch team essentially means you can be anywhere in the world to be on the book launch team. It means that for 10 days leading up to September 20th, you, you post something on social media. That's all you have to do. You post something on social media, you actually pre-order a copy of my book, which I will autograph and mail to you along with your free t-shirt. You post a shareable for 10 days. And then if you're interested in the boot camp, like I said, and if you sign up by September 1st, you get a 35% discount on the boot camp. So my right now I'm 15 women shy of what I would like my book launch team to be. I've got 85 women. I'd love to have 100 women on the book launch team. So if you're watching this and want to kind of come along for some fun, uh, yeah, I, I'd love it if you, I'd love it if you would kind of jump on board and um, have a little bit of fun along with me. And you have nothing to lose. You're getting an amazing book. You will be part of an amazing tribe full of support. And again, it's, it's a great opportunity. I'm hoping you get even more than that because there's, there's so much support and women, strong women supporting each other is the most amazing gift out there. And I have actually two questions. I want to invite anyone that's watching this video after September 20th that is still getting to know Alita, still follow the link. She still can buy the book. There will be plenty of other opportunities to work with her as well. So don't feel like it's after September 20th that you missed that opportunity because there will be several. She is blowing up and just really making a difference for women and it's beautiful. And what, I'm gonna end this, this is our last question. What would you tell the younger version of yourself? Well, um, so first of all, thank you so much for all of what you just said. You, you're, you're just so generous and so lovely. So what I would, what I would tell my younger self, it, it, it really is, it's a couple of things. So one is, and I think I told my younger self this, and I think this is what led me to make some of the decisions that I made. And I read it in a book. You guys, this is a quote. This is a quote by an author. And I'm drawing a blank on who said it. Thoreau, maybe. You might have to look it up. But in his book, what he said is, be thoroughly used up when you die. Uh, that resonated with me. I was, I was in my 20s when I read that book. I read that sentence. And I said to myself, that's, that's what I want to have happen to me. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die. And in order for that to happen, the other piece of advice I would give myself, and again, I think I did, is be free to be me. Mm. And that doesn't mean that we disregard people. It doesn't mean that we don't take care of what we need to take care of but it does mean that sometimes we have to walk away from some things 
that are trying to control us and not allowing us to be who we're created to be. So I, you know, I, I encourage every woman that I talk with to make sure she's in a position in life to be free, to be who she is so that she can do the hard work and make the contribution to be fully used up when she dies. You know, let's be happily tired at the end. Yes, I love that because I know I wasn't feeling free to be me for a long time. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, Alita, for your time, for your energy, for your spark. And I'm so excited to see the fire that your spark is creating and how big this really gets. I'm excited to watch this journey and walk this journey with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Willow. Thanks so much for this great conversation. And thank you everyone for watching.